Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection in mirrors. The topic of this video is ray diagrams for convex mirrors. And we want to know how do you draw a ray diagram for objects placed at various locations in front of a convex mirror? And how do you describe the images produced by convex mirrors? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. If you start with a sphere and put a reflective coating on the outside of it and then cut off a portion of that sphere, you have a convex mirror. A convex mirror has a principal axis. That's an imaginary line that passes through the center of the sphere from which the mirror was cut. Along the principal axes are two points. One is known as the center of curvature, mark C on the diagram. That's the center of the sphere from which the mirror was cut. The F point, or focal point, is the midpoint between the center of curvature and the mirror surface. The focal point has some special meaning. Rays of light traveling parallel to the principal axis will reflect off the mirror and reflect in line with the focal point. Any ray of light that reflects off a convex mirror will reflect according to the law of reflection. But there's two special rules that will help us draw ray diagrams. The first is that a ray of light that is traveling parallel to the principal axis will reflect and reflect in line with the focal point as shown. The second rule is that a ray of light that is heading towards the focal point will hit the mirror before it reaches it, then it will reflect and reflect parallel to the principal axis. I can use these two special rules of reflection to construct a ray diagram for an object placed some distance from a convex mirror. The process begins by picking a point on top of the object in order to determine the image of this point. Then draw two sets of incident and reflected rays towards the mirror. Here's the first one. It's traveling parallel to the principal axis and it reflects in line with the focal point. The second set starts with an incident ray heading towards the focal point on the opposite side of the mirror, but reaches the mirror first and reflects parallel to the principal axis. Now these two reflected rays are diverging, which tells me that this image must be a virtual image located on the opposite side of the mirror. To determine the, its location, I extend the reflected rays backwards to an intersection point. The intersection point is the image of the top of the object. Now the object is standing on the principal axis and stretching upwards above it. So the image must also stand on the principal axis and stretch upwards to this intersection point, as shown. I'm going to now repeat the process of drawing a ray diagram for an object location which is closer to the mirror to see if object location affects the result when you draw a ray diagram. So I pick a point on top of the object and from that point I draw two sets of incident and reflected rays parallel to the principal axis reflects in line with the focal point and heading towards the focal point reflects parallel to the principal axis. Since the reflected rays are diverging I have to trace them backwards behind the mirror to an intersection section point in order to determine the image of the top of the object. When I do, I notice it's located above the principal axis and I can draw in the complete image from the principal axis on up to this intersection point. Just like the first instance, my object is behind the mirror and upright. When describing the characteristics of images produced by mirrors, it's important to follow the lost art of image description. Lost is a mnemonic to help me remember what characteristics I should be describing. L is for location, O for orientation, S for size, and T for type. When it comes to convex mirror images, we've seen that in both instances, the location of the image is behind the mirror. On the opposite side is the object and it's in between the focal point and the mirror surface. The orientation of these images is upright, meaning not flipped over relative to the object. And the size is, is reduced in size relative to the object that is smaller than the object itself. The type of image is a virtual image. We know that because the reflected rays are diverging after reflection. They had to be traced backwards to an intersection point behind the mirror. This is the Optics Bench Simulator from our website. I've left a link in the description section. The candle that my mouse is on, on the right side of the convex mirror, is the object. On the opposite side, the left side, you'll see the image of this candle. I'm going to take the candle and slowly move it towards the mirror and back. You can observe the image as I do so. What you notice is that for all instances, the location of the image is on the opposite side of the mirror, located between the focal point and the mirror surface. You'll also note that it's always an upright image. 
and its size relative to the object is always reduced. As the object gets closer to the mirror, the image gets larger, but it always is smaller than the object itself, thus reduced in size. And the type of the image for all object locations is a virtual type image because the reflected light rays are diverging upon reflection. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you can find each on our website. We've left links in the description section of this video. The top one is the optics bench simulator I just showed you. Then there's the name that image activity or a minds on physics mission. Finally, the tutorial pages were the basis of this video. You might need that for a refresher. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.